Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 1 contrasts the difference between the righteous and the wicked. The righteous delight in God's word. The righteous meditates on God's word. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. The wicked, on the other hand, are like chaff that the wind drives away. They will not stand in the day of judgment. Our Holy Gospel for, Holy Gospel for today also has a contrast, not between, well, yeah, you could say righteous and wicked, but between the wise and foolish. The five wise virgins did not bring enough oil. So when the bridegroom came, they had to go and get some more. When they came back, it was too late. The door of the wedding hall was shut. Why did they not bring enough oil? Perhaps the bridegroom's coming was not important to them. Perhaps they got caught up in the cares and pleasures and the riches of life. The five foolish virgins represent those today who live as if God did not matter. They have no faith in Christ. They do not hear God's word. They do not receive the Lord's Supper. They reject God and the salvation that, that he has provided through his son. They resist the Holy Spirit. They do not fear God's wrath. They have no guilty conscience. They are preoccupied with the cares and the pleasures and the riches of this sinful world. And on the last day, the door of heaven will not be opened to them. It will be shut and the Lord will will not know them, even though they may call him Lord, Lord, open to us. They have no saving faith in Christ. Since they have rejected the gospel, the gospel cannot save them. Repent, all of us, now before it is too late. The five wise virgins, on the other hand, brought enough oil just in case the groom was delayed. They looked forward to the groom's coming. They couldn't wait. They realized what a high honor it was to be a part of the wedding and the reception. Nothing else was so important as to be ready for his coming and to be invited to the wedding hall. And so they wouldn't miss this event for anything. They waited they watched with anticipation, and when the, when the groom finally came, they rejoiced, they trimmed up their lamps, and they processed in with him to the wedding hall, and they enjoyed the celebration. The five, five wise virgins represent those today who have saving faith in Christ. They are repentant. They trust in the forgiveness that God has provided them for them in Christ. They believe that Jesus died and rose again for them and for their salvation. They trust in God alone for their salvation. Dearly beloved, are you among the wise or the foolish? Is heaven important to you or not? Do you look forward to the marriage feast of the Lamb? and his supper, or not? Are you children of light or children of darkness? Are you living in the light of Christ or in the darkness of unbelief? Who are the wise? Who are they and where did they get their wisdom? Listen to what Job says. His words are recorded, recorded in Job chapter 28. He says, For where then does wisdom come? God understands the way of it, and he knows its place. And he said to man, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. In other words, wisdom is from God from God alone and not from mankind. God alone understands wisdom and he knows what it is. He knows its place. 
God alone is wise, and he gives meaning to wisdom. This is affirmed in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 2 says, The Lord gives wisdom. So if he's able to give wisdom, then wisdom comes from him. Psalm, Proverbs 3 says, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. How did he create the world? By means of wisdom. By means of his word. By the means of his power. What is wisdom? Wisdom has nothing to do with intelligence or an IQ. It has nothing to do with a little voice within us. The source of wisdom does not come from our human reason, for our human reason is tainted with sin. Wisdom does not come from our heart, for out of our heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, and so forth and so on. What is wisdom? Proverbs chapter 9 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In other words, faith. Faith in God, faith in the one true God is the source of all wisdom. Do you have an awe and a reverence toward God or not? Do you regard him as your creator and redeemer or not? Again, faith, a trust in the one true God is, is true wisdom. But... Do you create your own faith in Christ? No. We cannot create the faith that is inside of us. Its origin is not from us. Rather, it is a gift. A gift to you from God himself. By grace you have been saved through faith. And this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, lest anyone should boast. Romans 10 says that faith comes by hearing. By hearing God's word, and by hearing God's word, a miracle takes place. Faith is created which trusts in the word that is proclaimed and in the, and in the promises of God. So neglect the hearing of God's word, and faith could wither and die like the foolish five foolish virgins who did not have any oil. Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. They are blessed, blessed by God's word. God's word keeps our faith strong. It nurtures and strengthens our faith in Christ. It is important then to always hear and study God's word and to attend the divine service and to receive that living word in our ears and in our mouth. I've been teaching the book of Proverbs this past year or so in the uh, ladies' Tuesday morning Bible study. I must, on, I must be honest, I personally have, have learned a lot. I invite you to, to attend as well. The book of Proverbs contrasts the difference between wisdom and foolishness. Let me give you a few, a few quotes. Proverbs 1 says, Let the wise hear and increase in learning. Proverbs 12 says, a wise man listens to advice. Proverbs 9 says something similar. Give wisdom to a wise man and he will be still wiser. In other words, those who are of the faith will humble themselves in confession, recognize their weakness, hear God's word, and are willing to improve, to learn, to gain wisdom from God's word. Proverbs 13 says, The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. So the one who has faith in Christ then teaches God's word, and that teaching is a fountain of life. In other words, eternal life. And it keeps us from the snares of eternal death. Psalm 14 says, One who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil because he recognizes that evil is from the devil. The devil, the one who wants to destroy us and to hurt us. Proverbs 15 says, The tongue of the wise commends knowledge. Proverbs 10 says, The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom. 
In other words, the one who is righteous, righteous on account of Jesus, not righteous in and of himself, but the one who is righteous on account of Jesus brings forth wisdom. And finally, Proverbs 28 says, he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. <clears throat> in other words, he will be delivered from eternal damnation. To summarize, true wisdom is from God and from his word, not from within ourselves. Therefore, the five wise virgins represent all those who have saving faith in Christ, who are repentant. They trust in the forgiveness of sins. They hear the word of God and they keep it and follow it. <clears throat> Let me now contrast the fool according to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 1 says, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 18 says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding. In other words, they don't want to, they don't want to listen to God's word. They don't want to hear God's word. They don't want to follow it. Proverbs 10 says, whoever utters slander is a fool. They break the eighth commandment. Proverbs 12 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. In other words, he does things according to his own way. He doesn't care about God's word or other people. He's very selfish. Proverbs 9.13 says, to turn away from evil is an abomination to fools. Why? Because they love evil. Proverbs 14 says, a fool is reckless and careless. Proverbs 20 says, every fool will be quarreling. In other words, they love a fight. Finally, Proverbs 28 says, whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool. Why? Because they don't trust in God or in his word. Unfortunately, there is a fool inside each and every one of us. You've been there, done that. You've uh, broken one of God's commandments. We've, we've wa wa walked down that, that, that dangerous path, and we say to ourselves, how stupid. Why did I do that? That fool inside of us is that old Adam, that sinful flesh. There is a part of us that doesn't want to go to church. It doesn't want to study God's word. It rejoices in evil and in the ways of the sinful world. It listens to Satan and is then caught in a trap. Our sinful flesh is arrogant and condescending. It exalts in itself and it loves to brag. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, forgive us. Lord, bring us to repentance that we may always see our sin, confess it, and receive the forgiveness that your son has earned for us. That's our prayer. Dearly beloved, God loves you. He cares for you. We know that because he sent his only son to die for you. We can't earn our way to heaven. We can't pay for our own sins. And so God came to do what we cannot do. He came in the flesh of his son. Jesus is the true wise one. First, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1 that Jesus is the source of all wisdom. He is wisdom par excellence. He took upon your sins and my sins and he carried them to the cross. And he made that payment for us. And there he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken because he was the greatest sinner of all, having all of our dirt and filth upon himself. And yet in the end of the cross, at the end there, he said, it is finished. The payment has been made and Christ died. He died as a sacrifice for our sin. Three days later, he rose from the dead. You were washed in the waters of holy baptism, being clothed with the righteousness of Christ. You are a part of the church, not having any spot or wrinkle or any such thing. You are holy and without blemish because of Christ. Your sins are forgiven because of Jesus. This precious gospel is your oil. It, replenish, it, 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 it replenishes your faith. Oil is distributed now 
in the preaching of the gospel, in the announcement of absolution, and in the feeding of the supper here of, our Christ, of Christ's body and blood. Faith is fueled by the words of our Lord. And the wise cannot get enough of these gifts. And they are given freely. We don't have to go and purchase it. But it's given freely from our Lord. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. There, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The word of the cross, the preaching of Christ, is foolishness to the world, but for, but for us, it is our only source of salvation. It is our joy. The unbelieving world thinks that what takes, clear, takes place here on Sunday morning is foolish. They think that it's foolish to put some water on, on, on a person's head. They think it's foolish to take a, part, to take a, a small little wafer and a sip of wine. So if someone makes fun of you for going to church on Sunday morning, what would you say? If you are persecuted from an unbelieving world for believing in Christ, what would you do? Count it all joy. And always pray for your enemies. Pray for their conversion. You know who you are, and you know who you are waiting for. As St. As Paul says in our epistle, you are children of light, children of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you are waiting for the resurrected and ascended Lord to return. You are waiting for Jesus to take you home to the heavenly banquet. And you anxiously wait for his glorious return. We don't know when he will come. And it's silly to try and predict the day. And we don't know when death will come to us either. But we are ready. Our sins are forgiven. We are cleansed with the blood of Christ. We are holy because of Jesus. He is our true wisdom, and he has made us wise through his holy word. So when Jesus will come, the cry will, will be heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. We will then arise. We will trim up our lamps, and with joy we will process in with our Lord to the heavenly wedding banquet. God grant this. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen.